Hey everyone, it's Gary Nicholson here for weatherweb.net. It's the look ahead video today on Wednesday the 13th of January. Thanks for watching. Now, if you've watched our weather school video here at weatherweb.net, you'll have seen the talk about the 850 millibar uh, heights and temperatures of minus 5 being crucial in forecasting snow. So I thought we'll have a look through the charts for this evening and tonight into Thursday, showing the current situation and just how finely balanced the atmosphere is in terms of the snow risk. This set chart then is uh, for 6pm this evening and it shows uh, generally values of minus 3 at 850 millibars, so at 5,000 feet across the south of England. The minus 5 is uh, nearer towards the bluer colours, minus 5, minus 6 transition zone. So uh, the boundary then is uh, in this sort of area where the minus 5 line is. So at this stage, most of precipitation is as rain. Running that through the early hours and the temperature is still at around minus 4, just hovering towards minus 5 towards at the far west. And it's at more across Scotland where uh, values are down below minus 5, so a greater risk of precipitation here falling as snow and coming in across West Wales too on the back edge of that frontal system moving in. Heading towards dawn and colder air just draining in more towards the back edge of that system. So these values across the central areas are at around the minus 5 level, uh, just towards minus 4 towards the east and the far south. Uh, a cold front by the stage somewhere in here. Um, and gradually then, a mixture of rain, sleet and snow across these central areas. Uh, snow mainly uh, over the hills, but uh, some sleet and wet snow at times getting down to lower levels. Some of the heavier bursts of uh, showers that will be around. Uh, just helping to chill the air as well, the process uh, known as evaporative cooling, uh, which just uh, brings that freezing level down a little bit lower as uh, that rainfall uh, intensifies and does chill the air uh, as moisture evaporates from the raindrops and the temperature of the air then just begins to fall. So it's all finely balanced uh, and it wouldn't be surprising to see even over modestly high ground of the Midlands uh, just uh, a brief covering of snow for a time. Mainly over the hills, any substantial coverings. Uh, I'm still not talking huge volumes of snow, but uh, I suspect over the hills of the Pennines, Wales, and particularly over the south of Scotland, uh, a covering of snow very much likely by dawn. Through the middle part of the day, and that colder air continues to pull its way southwards, you're looking at values at 850 millibars of around minus 7 over at Scotland, minus 6s across Wales, minus 4s towards East Anglia. So some of the heavier showers here have the potential to come in as some sleet and snow, and particularly any showers that are moving in to these uh, northern uh, districts through the day widely will fall to low levels as snow and may give some accumulations. All in all, though, across uh, lowland Britain, it's by no means a huge fall of snow and uh, nothing really to get desperately excited about. It's not a huge whiteout. It's not uh, a huge blizzard. It's a pretty uh, ordinary picture, but still a very awkward one. A nasty wintry mix. There'll be some icy conditions on untreated surfaces uh, after showers have fallen, even where there's been rain or sleet uh, over into Thursday morning. And again, these next few days as well. More details on that, as always, in the fast forecast. Let's then have a look a little bit further ahead, and this is the day 7 to day 10 means of the 500 millibar flow from the two models, the European here on the left and the GFS on the right, and you know we show these fairly frequently. So this is the time ending Saturday the 23rd of January, the three days leading up to that. The two models in somewhat agreement, yet disagreement. They've got a ridge and higher than normal heights in the vicinity of the British Isles, but exactly where they position it is quite different, and that could well have quite a marked effect on on the weather we see. The GFS looks generally milder, it's pumping in air more from the southwest, uh, whereas the European model uh, is trying to uh, keep that high further to the north and allow um, generally what would be colder air coming around the south side of the high to get in from the east effectively, uh, with the threat that this area of low pressure begins to cut off and you can just see that high trying to be squeezed away to the north and, and the jet running to the south of it. So a bit of a different evolution on how uh, that pattern may evolve and you know if we watched the video yesterday uh, we were talking uh, just at uh, the subtle differences uh, that may arise in the pattern going further forwards. Now just take a look over these next few weeks and this is the mean of the 500 millibar pattern from the CFS at longer range model. This is at week one so this is at 13th to the 19th of January so the short range uh, details. Low with normal heights, effectively low pressure at the surface in this sort of region, uh, higher than normal heights and high pressure in this region and there's the northerly flow then that we're seeing at the moment and over these next few days.
into week two to the 20th through to the 26th of January. So we're starting around next Wednesday onwards. Uh, higher than normal heights then still away towards uh, Greenland and extending across the British Isles as well. So there's that uh, effectively settled conditions that we're looking at going forwards. Low pressure, lower than normal heights uh, stuck away towards the southwest and the flow doing something like this around uh, that system. So trying to get milder air pushed in uh, but on the whole uh, still keeping us under rather benign conditions. The colder air uh, draining into Central Europe like this. Week three, so this is the final uh, week, the final few days of January, and showing higher than normal heights, extending a ridge across the British Isles and Western Europe. So uh, generally, pretty settled dry conditions uh, looking likely from that. Low pressure, low than normal heights towards the north. Frontal systems uh, probably passing uh, through in this sort of zone, uh, and uh, may just bring some rain from time to time towards the far north and northwest of Britain. But from that, uh, the indications are relatively mild and uh, one of being fairly dry in that period. But it's a story that continues into early February and higher than normal heights that's uh, shown as being uh, in evidence uh, near to and to the south of the British Isles by that point. Again, uh, treat the detail with some caution. But we've got the flow uh, again around the high, something like this. So maybe bringing fronts at times into the far north and northwest, but uh, on the whole, uh, indicating uh, higher than normal pressures uh, in the vicinity of the British Isles by this stage. So again, it may well be that drier conditions, more settled weather than we've seen this winter so far, is a continuing story heading into early February. Overall then, a change to the uh, wet and windy regime that we'd been used to in the first part of the winter. Drier, uh, frostier conditions are more common, uh, particularly uh, some chilly nights, but uh, looks as though once we get past this next week or so, uh, daytime temperatures recovering at least for a time. And of course, we'll keep you right up to date, as always, here at weatherweb.net. For today, thanks for watching and bye for now.